Swole Benji here. So today I'm going to talk about how long it takes for every single method in the game that a new player can do. That is from character creation, doing the tutorial so you get the free three day premium and going on out of the tutorial. How long it will take you to do activities to get premium, which I did overestimate the premium. It's currently 8.5 million, but in my tests, I continued until I hit 9 million because I don't know if in the future when you watch this, if the cost of premium will be up to 9 million or maybe it will be cheaper. I have no idea. So I set a goal to do every single activity that a new player can do and see how long it would take for me personally to grind it out until I got 9 million silver. And that is raw silver. That's not silver valued in the items I'm wearing, unless in a specific instance I sold the items. So let's get started with the video. The very first one is doing tier 5 solo dungeons. I know I sh don't. Hey, now that all the Redditors are gone, <laughs> we can talk some business, okay? So, in my example i followed my very own perfect start video which means i didn't harvest rocks and i didn't do the arena i just went straight into dungeons did the tier 4 dungeons until i hit tier 5 reaver and you know did use the bolt caster with druid robe build because on live the the specter jacket is still nerfed i can't really effectively test it on live uh so this was done with the druid robe and the bolt caster build which is on my channel you can check it out if you're new and this is the first time you've ever seen my channel all right so I stopped upgrading weapons when I hit 6.3 bolt casters, and the total time it took for me to hit 9 million silver was 15 hours. Now, let me explain. I only did tier 5 dungeons after I unlocked the reaver level. I did them faction flagged three tiles away from town, and I used the free 3-day premium you get for finishing the tutorial, and I did it all in one sitting. And oh man, oh man. <laughs> what a what a pain in the butt that was but i got it done it took me 15 hours now here's a funny thing i was on track to hit 9 million silver in 12 hours and then i just had the worst freaking luck i just had awful 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 drops in the dungeons and i i don't know what caused them i don't know if like the black market just shit itself or, or what happened but uh, three essentially three hours was wasted waiting for gear to drop and, you know, that happens sometimes, but um, it usually doesn't happen three hours straight, so I had a really bad luck streak. I must have broken a mirror or walked under a ladder or something, even though I never leave my van really to do those things. But the point is, a, a ladder flew over my van and gave me bad luck for those three hours. Okay, so now on to the next one. Now on the second character, which I also made brand new, went through the tutorial... But this time, I didn't follow the perfect start video. What I did was I sat in the tutorial, and I harvested fiber the whole time. I just did fiber until I hit tier 3. It didn't it, it didn't take that long because the fiber respawns really quick in the tutorial zone. And then I, I would I would go, and I would, re, I would uh, refine it, and then I would toss it out, and then I would rinse and repeat until I hit tier 3 on both. And then I went straight to bridge watch, and then I got... Uh, I did the starting tutorial, so I got the the Royal Sigil, sold that, got a set of, uh, you know, like a tier 3 gathering tool, went to a tier zone and started gathering fiber. In Bridgewatch, I didn't go to Thetford. Thetford has more fiber, but I did, did this in Bridgewatch because there's not a lot of fiber harvesters around Bridgewatch for some reason. I don't know why, but there's another reason too, and I'll get into that in a sec. All right. So what I did was after I hit tier 4, I got a gathering set for uh, fiber, and then I started gathering, and then when I hit tier 5, uh, then I started harvesting still in tier 4 zones, still in tier 4 zones around Bridgewatch. I never went to tier 5 zones, and it took 22 hours to get 9 million silver. Now, let me explain. Uh, there was one more step, too. It, it wasn't just gathering fiber, okay? Once I had enough fiber... I would then mosey on over to Limhurst and refine the fiber because Limhurst, if you look here, they get a refining bonus for fiber. Now, let me show you another reason why I chose fiber. I, I did a little planning before I chose my, my gathering profession, so check this out. This is the Bridgewatch Market, right? And we're going to go to resources and we're going to look at cloth. Cloth is at 181 right now. Fiber is at 48. 
which when you when you refine it, you're making big bucks. But check out hide is 63 now. Skinning takes twice as long, right? So I would I would estimate it would take even longer than 22 hours to get your premium if you did skinning. But once you hit once you max skinning, you're done forever with it, right? Uh, it's only 173. Uh, for the leather here, so fiber is beating it right now, or cloth is beating leather. Now metal bars only 138, ores only 40, uh, planks only 157, rocks are at 26, and stone bricks are at 77. This is an all-time low. So the reason I chose cloth is because not only is it selling for the most, it's also a shorter trip. To, to ride to Limhurst and back to Bridgewatch is a lot faster than riding to Martlock and back. And I don't know why that is, but that's just... There's just less zones to traverse. There was in the old world before the update as well. And that's why I chose Fiber. And it took 22 hours of gathering in, in Tier 4 zones. And, and I did a test before this as well to see if I had Tier 5 gathering, is it better to gather in a Tier 5 zone or a Tier 4 zone? And for the sake of silver per hour... I found it was better to harvest in a tier 4 zone, so if all you care about is gathering and all you care about is getting your premium, then you want to gather in a tier 4 zone. Once you hit tier 6, it changes. I don't have the exact data, so I can't really tell you about that yet, but that is how long it takes to gather to get premium for me when I did it. Friends. Speaking of royal sigils, I did make a video on how to farm these things, and it was 900,000 silver per hour if you have enough alts. However, the market has crashed down by 9,000, so it's a little bit less now. It's still worth doing if you're new. Let me explain how this method works. Okay, so I have 20 alt characters that do the expedition dailies. One alt can earn one royal sigil per day, and it took me 13 hours of doing expedition dailies, and it took 13 days because you, you can only do it once a day on, on each alt. And yeah, that earned 9 million silver, but also I had to set up each character. That means running through the tutorial, which is a minimum 15 minutes, and then another 5 to get them all set up with the f tier 4, 4.1 gear and all that. And as a new player, once you sell one sigil, you can easily afford this for like 2 or 3 characters, and then rinse and repeat until you have enough characters set up to do it. And you're going to have alt characters and multiple accounts anyway if you ever plan to use islands and guild islands and laborers and farmland. So this is something a new player can do. It, it's a little excessive to do, but it's possible. But essentially, the setup time and the time it took to farm the Royal Sigils was a total time of 20 hours. But once you're done with it, you have it forever. And these characters, you know, they grow on you. They slowly get stronger doing the expedition dailies. And it's good, it's good silver. That, that's how long it took, in case you're curious. Alright, the next one is an absolute joke. I thought I was being a big brain mastermind doing this one, but oh my god, is it a lot of work. And that is using focus freemium alts to grow carrots on your 44 island plots. <laughs> oh man. So here's the data on that one. Okay. Every day, well, on, on, on day one, you use 14 focus freemium alts. To grow carrots with an initial investment cost of 658,000. That's how much the carrot seeds cost to plant on 44 island plots. All right. And this took eight whole days. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So it takes 14 hours to make the freemiums in total. That's 20 minutes per character getting them access to the island, running them to the island. Having them open the chest, get the seeds out, pick up the the mounds from the shared chest, all that shit. Alright, then it takes 30 whole minutes for them to do the farm work, okay? <laughs> per day, for 8 days, that's 4 hours. Uh, hold on, my text is bleeding off the side of the screen there, there we go. And then 20 minutes per character, that's the, I already did that, yeah. So, it's, it, the, whole, the thing, it took 18 hours. Now, see, when you plant... 44 plots worth of seeds, okay? Uh, and this is not counting the fact that uh, you have to let them gestate for three days to have the focus freemium. I mean, I'm not counting AFK days because that, that's not really a real metric, but essentially you have to, when you make them, you have to let them sit for three days to get 30,000 focus. All right. And a lot of people that do these kinds of things, they just chain uh, referrals, unfortunately. So they have this for the whole month. All right. Uh, sad day, and you're not really supposed to do that according to SBI, and I'm not recommending it. I don't do it. 
I make a new character, I make them do the tutorial. Anyway, the point is, is that the total time to get 9 million silver with this method, it took 18 hours! Which <laughs> sucks! So don't do this method. It's really painful and it doesn't improve your character at all, but it was a fun theory to test to see if it was big-brained or not, and it turns out it's not. Next up is a market that's mostly plummeting. I did Fletcher's this time around. Uh, right now you can see Fletcher's are down to almost 50,000. I, I was lucky to sell them before this at 60-something thousand-ish, but here's the data. Okay, so laborer selling. Now, this took one hour of doing tier 5 dungeons a day to fill enough journals to level each laborer up, and it took 10 days until they were all from tier 2 to tier 5. It took 10 days. And then each laborer sells around 60,000, that is without premium after the taxes. It was a little bit over 9 million silver, but not that much over. Uh, so it took two hours for the total time that I spent trading the journals in and out with, with the laborers, but it also took one hour of tier 5 dungeons per day at a rate of 10 days and 2 hours. So that is 12 hours of work to afford premium. Are you getting sick of these yet? <laughs> Man, it's a lot of hours to get premium. Sure is. All right, the next one's a little shocking to me, but I do have to report it because I did get positive results from it, and I did the Slayer Corrupted Dungeon test. All right, where's the results on that? Here the... Hello? Here they are. All right, so I did Stalker Corrupted Dungeons. Now, I didn't do this on a new account. I, I did it on an alt of mine. I used Regular Bow, Cleric Robe, Guardian Boots, Hunter Hood, No Cape, Tier 4 Healing Potion, Cabbage Soup. And out of the time, I won 42% of the time. So I actually lost more than I gained. And about every three to 500,000 I would earn through the dungeons. And this is a character with premium, by the way. Not, not without premium. Uh, every time I would get around three to 500,000, it really depends. I would go back to town and bank. And I did this out of Care Leone in Red Zones. The Stalker Corrupted Dungeons, your drops don't matter if you're doing them in the Black Zone or the Red Zone. They absolutely don't matter. Alright. Now, I mostly lost to other bow users, staff users, all the staffs. Uh, death Givers, I could never beat a single Death Givers. Black Hands, I, I beat one Black Hands user, but the rest would just punch me and purge my bow buff, and then I was dead. Uh, maces were really bursty and killed me immediately. Uh, frost staff users, I couldn't do anything because they would just run away and I couldn't chase them. Healers, I couldn't kill them in time. Spear users were ridiculously powerful for some reason. I didn't know they buffed spears, but I was getting my butt kicked by spear users. But I, I won pretty much everything else, like, like, uh, bear paw users, uh, curse staff users, all that stuff I was able to beat pretty dang easily. Did it in 13 hours, which actually beats the tier 5 yellow zone dungeon time. But like I said on the tier 5 yellow zone dungeon spot, I was very unlucky for 3 hours there. But hey, uh, I was unlucky doing Stalker Corrupteds and I lost more than I won. But the fact is that this Master's Bow is 13, 14,000 silver. The reason I use a flat 6, guys, let me turn off the text here. The reason I use a flat 6 is because you get this passive here called Attack Speed. And when I did DPS tests, I learned that this is a huge increase to your DPS over all the other passives. And that's why I chose to use an alt character, not a brand new character out of the tutorial, because you would have to do Hunter Corrupted Dungeons before you can do Stalker, and I really didn't feel like doing that. I just wanted to get right into it with a character that already had premium that I play on. Uh, plus, that character's leveling bow anyway. The spec is about 40 or 50 something, but it doesn't matter because it's Stalker Corrupted, which limits your IP anyway. So that's the data on Stalker Corrupted Dungeons. This one's a little sad to report because I don't have the data for it, but I have the estimated data for it. Alright, so uh, this one's talking about Care Leone to Bridge Watch, back and forth, uh, flipping trades. So what you do is, uh, how I like how I did it was I started in Care Leone with a character, you know, 100,000 silver, uh, spent an hour in the tutorial getting a bunch of stones so I could sell. Started out with 100,000, did, did the, the pre-quests, got the royal sigils and stuff like that. I went to Care straight to Care Leone, you know, made sure I had tier 3 ox unlocked, and I got a tier 3 ox, I got some, I wore plate armor, uh, and a 
just a tier 3 staff so I can move around faster. Although I learned that staffs aren't really good at tier 3. But anyway, the point is, is that I started at Carleone and I, 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 I logged out of that character, logged into another character, and I compared prices in Bridgewatch. Carleone is known for its food and potions. They're always cheap. Uh, so I, I took whatever was the cheapest food or potion I could find in Carleone at the time, and then I compared it to the most expensive in Bridgewatch, and I bought out as much as I could in Carleone. And then I transported it to Bridgewatch, and then I would do the opposite, where I would figure out what's cheap in Bridgewatch that I can transport to Carleone. And I would do this back and forth, back and forth. And um, every single time, you know, I would have to just log out, the log, log out of the character, wait for the items to sell. I would log back in like an hour or two later, everything would have sold. So the, the actual time it takes for me to go to Bridgewatch to Care Leon was five minutes. It looks like it's far away, but you just cut right through these red zones and you get you get there in five minutes. It's five minutes trip, five minute trip each time. I did this for 55 minutes, doubling down every single time. So I started with 120 something K and that made me like three to 400 K and that made me over a million and that made me over three million and so on. You, you get the idea, right? Like I just kept going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Though it didn't always jump up each time like that much. Sometimes it was only jumping up four to five hundred thousand. Because after you start flipping for a lot, because everyone else is doing this too. Like you have to get on bright and early to do this. Uh, uh, Fifty-five minutes in, I was transporting, got ganked, lost everything. It was the last. Oh, server's going down in ten minutes. It was the last run, and I was at fifty-five minutes of playtime. Fifty-five minutes, guys, to make nine million silver, and it's gone. Some someone's rich. Someone has so they, they weren't able to loot that many potions. I guarantee you. Like they they got all the potions uh, and the foods that I was transporting from Carleone to Bridgewatch. Eight million silver worth just gone. That's uh, what I get for doing red zone content, right, guys? But essentially, I was a if things would have worked out, it would have only taken one hour to make nine million. But then again, you have to really, really be smart with flipping. You have to know how to do math and spreadsheets and write down all your data and use alt characters to look at this stuff. And it took a lot, like, it actually took a lot more time than, like, just the transporting was, was under an hour, obviously. But logging into characters and logging out and checking the markets on each character multiple times was a lot more than one hour's worth. So I would say this method was three hours, three hours worth of, uh, Basically doing schoolwork to get 9 million silver, which I, you know, I guess the brains beat the brawn But my gripe is that this doesn't really advance your character. So uh, That's the data on that one All right, so this next one I know I'm not doing a lot on the screen and I'm sorry for that But this one I have characters that represent each faction So my soul binge character is bridge watch and then I have a character for Limhurst and a character for Fort Sterling so what I do is whenever I'm doing my faction grinds on my characters, I look at this map and let's say Limhurst has pushed all the way through to Bridgewatch. So what I do is I log into my Bridgewatch character, which they will be mounting a push to push back to Limhurst. And after that happens, I log into my Limhurst character, which will then push back to Bridgewatch and so on and so forth until I have done the faction daily on every single faction. Except Carleone, I haven't started a Carleone. I, I did start a Carleone character, but I haven't been using them because I just get really freaking burnt out doing this every day. It sucks. And, and Carleone is like whatever because your own faction ganks you if you're not part of their stupid hand holding guilds. The point is, <laughs> is that, um, let me show you the data. All right, so this took 60 hours to amass 9 million silver through selling the faction hearts. Uh, 5,000 points a day per character times 5. They're about 30. It, each character was played for about 30 minutes. So two and a half to three hours tops, maybe. You know, just, just a small chunk of my day. It's whatever. Um, but that amount of time spent faction farming on each character, it was 60 hours. Uh, which, the thing with faction outpost stuff is you should really, like, combine it with doing other things like gathering and blowing up dungeons. Not just doing the outposts. So, um, now I, I, I do want to say you can technically tune these hours down because once you capture a bunch of outposts, you can technically just go AFK and after a little while you'll get the residual points for participating, uh, which will boost you over 5k. I don't know how much time that is or how many outposts you need for the residual to hit 5k a day. I'm still working on that data. Um, I don't 
I don't know, man. It's it's really mind numbing. But there you go. It's 60 hours if you just want to do faction Illazone outposts where you ride around and stand on a capture point. It's really boring and not worth the effort. But there you go. This one's just a funny one. Okay, so being a YouTuber, <laughs> being me, being Soul Benji, and putting your referral link uh, pinned in every video's description and in the uh, or in the comments, uh, I make about a thousand five hundred gold a month. Uh, from gold referrals, and this is what they look like. It says referral gold reward. Congratulations You received your gold reward for successfully recruiting a player um, Also, every time there is a new mount skin I, I get I get those I usually just let them rot in the chest and sell them when they get over 12 or 13 million I don't really let I don't hold on to them too long But essentially those are free premiums as well like right now. I have 9,000 gold stacked up and this is all from uh, referrals <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Um, if you're curious how much gold I make from referrals, it's about three a month. Uh, yeah, I know you would think it would be more, but not a lot of people use the referral link and I don't really push it. I'm not like, hey guys, make sure you click the referral link. I don't really shill that out. I just put it, I just put it in the comments and pin it, you know? Now, this next one, I don't recommend at all because it was a pain in the butt. And I wasn't really fair with the testing because I didn't do it on a new character. I did it on my main character with a bear mount, which kind of cheats it. But that is heart transports. So you need a 700,000 silver investment to buy 15 hearts. Then you transport the 15 hearts one city over, turn in the quest, get another quest, and return back to your main faction's town, and you'll receive 19 hearts. So, this, it took 47 trips both ways. Uh, or, so, you, you go there and then you go back. And that takes 15 minutes e each time. You can do four an hour, essentially. But there were gankers. Limhurst had a lot of gankers. Sometimes I had to, I, I, I couldn't just go directly at them, even on my bear. Because they had, like, eight of them with frost staff and claws and demon capes. And I mean, bears are tough, but they, can, they can't take, you know, an infinite minute. Bleh, they, it's hard to tank 10 players that are dedicated to dismounting you, so I had to go around them. But anyway, it took me 12 hours to get 9 million silver. 12 hours, and the reason I don't like this method is because it doesn't. you don't fame up your combat. You're not faming up your gathering. You don't get anything but hearts, and the heart economy just keeps plummeting and plummeting and plummeting, and it just, it's just sad. Like... This method is going to make less and less silver as time goes on, so it's it's really not worth doing. The only people actually doing it are bots, and I don't know, like, I don't know who's doing these. I don't know why they would do it. Alright, I wish I had the data for this one. This is another one where I just couldn't stomach it, guys. I just could not finish this one. It's ghost hunting. Okay, that's arcane essence farming. For the, the, like it was about three hundred twenty-five thousand an hour on average, and I did like six or seven hours worth until I just said, "Fuck this! I just can't. I'm not doing this anymore. This is suffering. This is absolute torture." Every literal two to three minutes, I would have Ginkers run at my crappy alt character with a bow. Uh, I mean, they'd be using daggers and they'd be using frost staffs, and it's like it's like they had a guild that controlled the area. I'm not even kidding. Like. <laughs> Like, a tier 6 red zone is being controlled by a guild. Come on now. Let me show you what I'm talking about for those that don't know what ghost hunting is. Uh, so, you go on the map, and you go to the tier 6 red zones. Uh, here's the one that I went to, which is Film M Mirar Step. I don't know how to say th these words. But you go here, and there's this big triangle on the map. I don't freaking know what, what it is, but... See, it's called the Sepulchre of Magic, and around this area, around these dotted lines, and inside are these ghost monsters, and you kill them, and you get Arcane Essence, and they help you craft enchanted potions. That's what they're for. Uh, you, you go there, and they can drop anywhere from Tier 4 to Tier 8 Essences, and then they sell anywhere from, like, a couple thousand to 50, 80, 200,000, something like that, it, depending on the tier. Uh, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. I was getting around 325000 an hour, uh, and that's with premium, by the way. And But the thing is, is just, it, it gives you almost no fame. It's suffering. People are constantly, constantly, constantly trying to gank you. And, oh, man, is it, it just, ugh, I can't stand to do any more of it. Please don't make me do any more of this. I, 
I'm sorry, guys. I know you want the hard data, and I'm like the data gathering like nerd in the in the van that <laughs> does all the math and the spreadsheets. But I'm not doing this one. Screw that. Next one's mostly a flex. This is not something newbies can do. This is something that you, as a player, can look forward to. Now that you know the struggles and how it, long it takes for a brand new player to get premium, let me show you what what it all comes down to, okay? If you have focus characters for farmland and focus characters for crafting potions that are all very high spec, all right? You spend 30 minutes on your crops. You spend five minutes crafting the potions, and that's five million silver. <clears throat> now, let's get over nine million silver in one hour and ten minutes. Like, come on now. In two days, over nine million silver? But the pre-requirements are that you spend over a hundred million in silver, uh, premiuming up alt accounts so that you'll have enough farmland to, to manage. Then you have to spend months getting uh, two uh, potion crafters maxed out or very high. And then you need those two to three months for your watering alts. All which need active premiums. And uh, so that that's what, three to four active premiums. That's 27 to 36 million silver. But you're making five million a day for 30 days. And with only one hour and ten minutes of effort, essentially, right? So, uh, well, one hour and ten minutes of effort, you know, split between two days because it's 35 minutes a day. And there you go. That's uh, that's the video. <laughs> I, this it took a very long time for me to figure this out. And and let me tell you right now that focusing on watering crops and crafting potions isn't even the biggest and best way to make money or silver in this game with with, with premium and with crafting. I don't know what is because I would let you guys know. I don't I don't like hold these infos back anymore. I just straight up tell you because I don't really play much anymore other than farming for faction stuff on alt characters. That's pretty much it. The game is very... There's not. There's nothing left for me to do. I, I've thought about, you know, actually like opening up like a guild for all of you guys to pile in, but uh, the, the truth is, is that uh, I would just piss off a lot of you with my ideologies and my uh, autismo spurg lord style of thinking because you know most of reddit is already mad at me over that because the way i do math and the way they, they do math doesn't match or something I, I don't know i don't really care um <laughs> that's the video that's the video guys um and if i didn't open a guild up it's we're not gonna be able to do anything anyway because i don't uh, i just i just want to play a different game okay if i start playing new world and you guys play new world hell yeah i'll make a guild and we can all play together and stuff right uh, one, one thing is that I, I've become less bitter lately over time because when you work retail as a wage slave for over 13 years, you get really bitter and hateful at the world. And I, I've lived a neat life for over two and a half years now, and it, I'm starting to like chill out more and be relaxed and be cool and be just, you know, whatever, right? Um, and that's from not having to work and stress out at a crappy job that barely pays you a living wage, if you can even call it that. Working 12 to 14 hours a day, 1 to 2 hours in traffic every day, like, screw all that. So I'm, I'm starting to regain my humanity is what I'm trying to say, okay? <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm Soul Benji, thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole, and... Check out the links in the description, check out the links in the pinned comments, and I will see you in the next one. And make sure you return your shopping carts too.